Birds have an important meaning in the uh, Masonic symbolism. Let's see if I can get out and video him without him flying away. There you go. I love being out in my backyard, making videos, exploring nature, exploring sacred geometry in nature. I'm going to talk about the uh, tetragrammaton today because it's such a fascinating subject. There he goes. I'm going to show you what I said the tetragrammaton, I meant the uh, tetractus. I'm going to show you what the tetractus is all about. Explore some of the meanings of the tetractus. Uh, Albert Pike in his Morals and Dogma and in his book Esoterica discussed the uh, tetractus extensively. Several people have uh, talked about the importance of the tetractus. The Pythagoreans, of course, made a big deal about the tetractus. And uh, I'll be sharing that more of that information with you as well because uh, very important in Freemasonry the idea of the uh, triangles it's a beautiful day beautiful day to be a bird out flying isn't it I wish I could fly like a bird sometimes when something's agitating them Well, anyway, I don't want this video to go to the birds, <laughs> even though it probably could and should. To the American Indians, the crow was a sacred animal, too. There was, uh, they were messengers. Birds were messengers in the ancient times anyway, as far as that goes. So. Okay, the, uh, the tetractus is the triangle of ten dots. Michael Schneider in his book The Beginner's Guide to the Universe has some uh, very interesting points to say about the Tetractus and uh, Albert Pike as well discussed the Tetractus in relation to Freemasonry that is the Tetractus. With the, uh, within the Tetractus are all of the, the various shapes of sacred geometry can be uh, found, utilized, and understood within the Tetractus. And Schneider shows the idea. The ancients had this principle, this idea of the four elements, earth, air, wind, and fire. And uh, this morning I'm feeling the wind while I'm on the earth. And I've brought my water, so all I need to do is make a campfire and I'd have the four elements. But they they didn't symbolize, they didn't understand these four elements as the earth four elements exclusively. There, there was a philosophy behind this. The theme in the Tetractus that is so interesting is how it can, you can see the various figures, the cube, the octahedron, the tetrahedron, etc. can be formed within the premise of the Tetractus. And the idea of the various elements being discovered and associated with earth, air, wind, fire, heaven, so on and so forth. The Pythagoreans first explored the simple arithmetic and geometry of the Tetractus using dark and light stones. What they did is they used the, uh, the one plus, you can see this over here, one plus nine is ten. They would put the... Uh, white dot in the middle and gives you 10 in the tetractus. The number 10 of course is the the event horizon beyond the horizon. You have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. At 10 they begin to repeat over. 1 and 0 is 10. 1 and 1 is 11. 1 and 2 is 12 and all. So 10 was considered the threshold. A very very important number 
the decad and the decad was in found in numerous forms and of course it's through it's through the uh, geometry of nature that's why I love coming out in my backyard so to speak out into the world because it is from nature that we got our geometric knowledge of things simple natural shapes the branchings the numbers the significance and meanings of how rocks formed, how crystals formed, trees, shrubs, bushes, animals, even ourselves, the geometry of the universe, the ancients taught, is within us. This is what makes man the microcosm within the macrocosm. This is the theme of the point within the circle. The point within the circle is the very same concept as the point within the tetrad. From that central point, you can see from that central point within the center of the tetrad, all of the different shapes of nature are shown. And we are part and parcel of nature. One of the fascinating depictions of the Tetractus, one of the important points is that by studying the Tetractus, the ancient mathematicians noticed that 10 is the unique and only triangular number among the infinitely many that is a sum of consecutive odd square numbers. 1 plus 9 equals 10. And Schneider shows this. A triangular number is 1 is the first triangular number, then 3 because you can shape a triangle with it, then 6 because you can shape a triangle with it, and then 10 and the 10 was important to him because, of course, the, the theme, the theme of 10 in the Tetractus is the combination of the point, line, surface, solid with the earth, air, wind, and water, or uh, fire and water. So this, this idea of a physical geometrical shape, a physical geometrical shape that is in nature and as well as within us. And of course this is huge in the, uh, the Kabbalistic doctrines also and in the sacred geometrical, in the sacred geometrical analysis of the cathedrals. Now this directly relates to Freemasonry because of course one of the ideas of the history of our craft is because we arose from the medieval cathedral building guilds, the stone masons, the operative masons. We have become speculative masons. It's too bad in some respects. I mean how would it be to be able to build something so magnificent as the cathedrals in Europe? There's some of the wonderful geometry directly from nature that are applied to the cathedral shapes which we have built, mankind. So it, it's really interesting to, uh, and then of course uh, one of the wonderful pictures. Here's the principle, here's the idea. Man as a microcosm, a miniature universe, the geometry within us overlaid with the geometry of our huge buildings which we have taken from nature, the sacred geometrical aspects from nature, which of course is the geometry of the universe. Each one of the chakra energy systems within mankind is a miniature universe. The idea is we have the lower chakras as we meditate and become more spiritual, we move up that chakra line. The idea of the cathedrals is to get us to look heavenward, to open the third eye, to open our consciousnesses, to enhance our spirituality, to put us in touch with the grand cosmos.
because this is actually the context where we live.